Winx Club. This is a show that I watched religiously as a child, and recently I've been kind of into watching it mainly the newer seasons five and six. For those of you that don't know, Winx Club is a magical girl show that aired in 2004 in Italy, but it had a revival series in 2010 that was co-produced through Nickelodeon, and that was the version I fell in love with. We see the story through the eyes of Bloom. She is a young girl who one day discovers that she has magical powers and is the fairy of the dragon flame while saving a girl named Stella. She attends a school for fairies, learns to control her magic, and fights evil with her friends to save the magic dimension. In fairy form. They do this for six seasons. There are eight, but, um, the last two seasons are, um, uh, they're certainly something. I'm going to also say this now, Flora was, and still is, my favorite of the group, and no one can change my mind. Around the time that I started thinking about Wings Club, I've been also thinking about moths in general. You know the bug? Like, not just normal ones, but like, the big boy moths. And why are moths kinda underrated? I've been scrolling through Instagram, I've been scrolling at fan art, and Pinterest. Pinterest? Pinterest is my best friend. And then one day, one particular day, I wondered, what if moths were magical girls? Or specifically, what if moths were Winx Club fairies? So let's get into it. So I picked four moths to do for this video, and first we are starting with the Comet Moth, also known as the Madagascan Moon Moth. A few fun facts, they were first discovered in 1847 by Felix Eduard Guedenmenefil. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. They are the largest silk moths in the world, and these moths only live up to six to eight days when they are adults. This is because the adult moths cannot feed on plants to survive at that point. They do have a mouth and a gut, but it actually doesn't function. Studies have shown that not only do their long yellow tails help them divert away from predators, even in the daytime, the eye spots on the back of their wings can be off-putting to predators. The eye spots make the predators think that they are a lot larger and more dangerous to approach. And I thought that I should use this idea to design her theme. So my main idea with her is that she's a psychic fairy, and she uses spells to manipulate, scare, or confuse her targets. Kinda like Darcy. But literally the exact opposite, considering that purple and yellow are complete opposites on the color wheel. I didn't know this until after the fact. But anyway, also before I do go into each design, I'm gonna be using the Believix transformation for all of the girls. I originally wanted to use the Charmix design, but all of the moths have wings that like go over their body and they're like pretty big. And it gave me like season three Believix type vibes. I gave this character a darker skin tone because I thought it would contrast nicely with the yellow. Um, the eye spots on the Comet Moth's wings, I wanted that to be a good design point as well, so I put them everywhere. Above her skirt, on her antenna headband, on her wings, below her wings, on her top, and on her neck. I also tried to make her wings more round looking since the female moths have more smaller rounder wings, and the reference that I had accidentally pulled up was of a male moth. Whoopsies! I designed the skirt so it would look similar to the wing shape, and I added glitter on the skirt, the top, the shoes, and on the wing outline because that's how it's done in the show. I designed the neckline on the top to look similar to the top wings of a comet moth, and how they like curl inward, if that makes sense, and I thought adding lace would add more variety and color. I designed the shoes to curve downward to look like the end of the wings, and I colored them yellow with a burgundy-ish outline to capture not only the tail wings, but how they are colored as well. I also gave her a headband of antennas instead of just having antennas just like stick out of her head. And finally, as for her hair, 
My initial idea was to give her a wolf cut, but I changed it to long bangs instead to add some layers. Finally, I added streaks of orange in her hair, just like in the show, how each fairy, depending on like their color scheme, they have like a bright color streak in their hair. And I thought that doing this, it would of course like fit the theme, but it would also, you know, just like match with the show. And finally, here she is. I'm pretty proud with how she turned out. Let me know what you guys think. The third one is the Rosy Maple Moth, and this is a North American moth that was first discovered in 1793. Few fun facts to start off, the Rosy Maple Moth is the smallest silk moth. They can be found in the eastern side of the United States, and the males are surprisingly smaller than the females. The males have fluffier antennas than the females. Um, these moths can't actually hear, they use their body language to hear instead, and other animals. And they also use their wings for camouflage. So one thing that I did end up keeping in the design that I also did keep in the sketch was the idea to give this character very thick wavy blonde hair since the moths have like a lot of blonde fluff on them. One thing that I most certainly did not keep in the final design, it was my initial idea to give her like an open short dress with like the two ends like the ends of the dress to like replicate like the bottom wings i didn't like it so i changed it because not only did i not like it it ended up looking nothing like winx club at all so i changed it instead to a dark pink crop top with lining on the inner parts to capture the color on the moth's body and how it's like designed i did the same scheme for the skirt and i added glitter as well to fit the theme I also designed this character based on the word Rosie in Rosie Maple Moth. Wow, so creative, oh my gosh. Wow, I thought Ghost just floated away. <laughs> and I used a lot of rose designs all over. I added light pink roses on her shoes, her headband, and on her wings. An idea I also had that I didn't end up keeping was to give her these sort of vines that wrap around her. And I was also planning on like adding roses. You can see in the sketching phase I did try to add roses. And I was initially going to make the vine green. But there was just something about it. Like the colors just weren't like matching. Um, I remember I was like really struggling a lot with the coloring on the outfit but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I applied the same colors on the moth to their wings, and I instead changed the vine to be pink instead, and I just added the green to her eyes. I added the signature sparkles on the wings outline, I gave her some eyeshadow, and other than that, um, I can't really think of anything else to say, so here she is. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Also, my idea with her is that she is a nature fairy, and as for one of her powers, she can enhance her hearing through the animals or plants that she focuses on. The third moth was the Urnessa Curenta, and this decision, I kind of regret it. I couldn't find anything on this thing. Anything. I mean, they are very pretty. I was drawn to them because of their long antennas and their bright red colors. Um, but I think that was the only thing I liked about them. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've My artist's eyes were the one thing that just wasn't helping me in this situation. <laughs> um, literally, like, the only two facts that I found on these creatures while scrolling on the internet was these moths were discovered in 1909 by Walter Rothschild and they can be discovered in these areas French Guiana, Ecuador, Peru, and the state of Amazonas in Brazil. I kid you not, these were the only things that showed up on every single freaking site that I tried to use. Anyways, I guess I had a pretty good concept figured out with the sketch, but when you go from the sketch to the finalized product, I'm pretty sure that some artists can relate. But you know how sometimes, um, the math doesn't math, the art doesn't art, and things start to change? I'm also very sleep deprived. I'm gonna- I'm also gonna try to get through this script. Um, but anyways, um, as I was trying to fix her up, my mind started to wander. I started looking at her colors, and I was watching season six, and
And then I started thinking about Diaspora. Hmm. I was thinking about how much I hated her, how much I hated her in this freaking show, the different shades of red, the small pops of black and white, and how much I hated her. And then I thought, you know what? Why not make this character a fairy of gemstones? I mean, that's Diaspro's theme. Might as well have a character that could also be under that theme. Um, I wanted to give her these super long dramatic lashes to capture the silhouette of the antennas, and I also gave her a headband with these red gemstones that were like by the headband. I gave her purple eyeshadow to contrast with the red, and recently I've been a big fan of like hair that's like so short, but they've got like long strands or like small long strands in the front of like the hair. So I added like a streak of red to also fit the theme. I colored her clothes pretty much the same. I made her top a bright red with a gemstone in the center. But as for her skirt and shoes, I colored them red with a black outline to add more colors. And I also added some glitter. I of course copied the wing shape to be the same shape as the moths. I added the same circle white patterns the white circle patterns on the wings and I also added diamonds on the ends of the wings to of course fit the theme of like gemstones. In the end, it feels like this really doesn't fit in with the whole Winx Club category. For some reason I don't see Winx Club when I see her. It feels like there's a lot going on and it feels like the colors just aren't working. I think maybe to start off if I like remove the ruffles from the shoes and change the eyelashes to look like normal ones to fix the silhouette. I think maybe that would help, but you know, I can't go back. Um, I probably would have been a little happier with making her a Charmix design instead, but you know, it's already finished. Like I said, I can't go back. And I think it's all right. I like how the wing shape turned out. I like the outline of the wings instead and how the colors pop. Here she is. Let me know what you guys think. Also, sorry if I'm acting kind of nonchalant right now. I'm very tired. I'm gonna try to get through this script. But anyway, let's move on to the final one. So here we are. We are on to the final moth for this video. And I think the right way to tell you guys is with a true story. This took place when I went to camp for a few days for a school event. I was in fifth and sixth grade, so I was about 13 or 14. I remember it was late in the evening one day and these girls and I were just playing basketball at this court when all of a sudden I saw this like shadow that was like on the floor by my foot and it was moving and I looked up and I saw like the biggest bug fly up to this large light and then spin down and down and down and down until it hit the floor. So I walked up to it very carefully and then I looked down and I realized that this was not a normal bug at all. I thought it was a butterfly or a moth, but because it was nighttime, I figured that it was a moth. This was the biggest moth I had ever seen in my life. And frankly, I have not seen one like it since, I am being completely honest. It had these bright green wings, it had a white body, and it with these like adorable yellow antennas on their head. It was a beautiful moth, and it even had like these tails on their wings. I carefully picked up the moth and I tried to set it down in the grass by this tree. But, um, the moth apparently had other plans because it decided to just make another move on the non-existent unmoving large light. And then it hit the light dead on and it just fell to the floor again. I didn't want anyone to step on it, so I picked it up again, and I just put them on a branch instead. I tried to see if there were maybe any flowers in the area or anything that I could maybe leave for food, but I couldn't find anything. When it was time to leave, I said one last goodbye to the moth, made sure they were secure on the branch, and I left. So, still don't know what moth I'm talking about? Well, this moth, which I would come to later discover, is one of the few largest moths in North America. They were first discovered in 1758 by Carls Linnaeus, and this moth was the first North American moth that was reported in literature. This moth is the Luna Moth. They are also called the American Moon Moth. Like the common moth and many other large moths, they actually don't have a mouth or a digestive system, and they can live up to a week after hatching. Knowing that fact actually, and just like, I'm gonna get a little sappy for a second, just bear with me. Um, like, knowing the fact that, like, I got the chance to see a moth so beautiful, and the fact that, like, 
they only get like a few days to live like after they hatch like it seemed like it was such a rare moment and i'm happy that i got to witness and see like such a beautiful creature you know so going into the design i was a little stumped for a while because i was wondering on what route i should go for this character my initial idea was to give her an open dress i had like initial like an initial idea of like a tarp that would like drape over her but that would make no sense at all i hated that idea so i skipped it um and as i was researching i found that the luna moth was inspired by luna a moon goddess in greek mythology and i got super excited guys like i got so excited that i had changed everything from my original concept and i went right into the designing phase i gave her a green top that drapes to the side to capture the multiple folds that luna has for her dress and i also added some lace on the top and at the bottom of the skirt i also designed her hair to be very similar to luna's I made it blonde because I thought it would blend nicely with the green, and I also gave her a darker skin tone for good contrast. I of course designed the wing shape to be exactly like the Luna Moths. I added a lighter wing outline as well. I remember I tried to add a darker one, but I think like a lighter wing outlook, it made things more balanced. I gave her a choker with a moon design on it. In some references, I saw Luna with a crescent moon headpiece. And instead of giving her a headpiece altogether, I gave her a yellow antennas that curve inward to capture that same silhouette of the headpiece and of course of the moths. I made her wings the theme of the moon of course and I added the shape of the moon on the wings and on the tails and on the shoes. So it actually wasn't my initial idea to give her pink hair, pink ideas, or anything at all pink with this character. But a few days ago, as I'm typing this on like a random Wednesday, well, I'm reading, typing this on a Wednesday, I'm technically recording on a Friday. Um, basically I had to go to the hospital for um, health reasons that I don't really feel comfortable with sharing. Um, and as I was waiting on a doctor, while I was drawing, someone sat next to me and she said that she really liked my art. Her name is Ray, and we ended up talking a lot about art in general. I showed her the designs that I was working on for this video and she showed me her art. We talked for hours in the waiting room. As I was wondering what else I should do for this piece, that was when she had asked, will you be adding anything pink at all? I told her that I wasn't sure and that I was debating on leaving out the pink entirely. But that was when she brought up the idea of adding the pink to the hair or to the antennas. And I didn't even think about that. Like, pink highlights. Pink highlights. It's literally perfect. Like, I don't even know why I didn't even think about that. I probably was going through a lot at the time during the hospital, but you know what? I now know that idea now. So I added a gradient to the hair and to the antennas, and finally she is finished. This is for you, Ray. Here she is, and I'm super happy with how she turned out. Let me know what you guys think. Also, Ray, if you're watching this, hi! So here are all of the four designs that I did for this video. And thank you all so much for watching and listening. I greatly appreciate it. Sorry if I seem um, a little drained. Um, I had a long day at work. Um, and usually I take like a short nap before I like work on my videos or when I draw or when I record. Um, today was kind of stressful. Um, I just wanted to get through this recording so I could at least like try to get it done. Um, but hi. I hope today has been treating everyone well. Um, thank you so much for staying until the end. It is of course like greatly appreciated. I really did enjoy like going back to my roots with Winx Club again. And I honestly would love to do more videos like this. If you guys also would like a part two, if you guys have any interesting moths as well that I could design for the next video, please let me know. It would be gratefully appreciated. Your guys' comments give me a lot of inspiration, so please don't hesitate at all. In this video, I had actually meant to get into a rant about how I felt um, on Winx Club season seven and eight, because boy oh boy do I have an opinion on those last two seasons. But you know what, let's save that for the next video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please hit like and subscribe to see more of me and more videos and more videos like this. And as always, stay hydrated, stay safe, stay well rested, because that's not me right now. I'm very tired, 
I'm going to go back to bed. Um, I'm going to try to get a lot of rest because I ne because I have another shift tomorrow. You can hear it in my stuttering and my um, rapid, sl but at the same time slow sort of talking. Um, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm probably going to cut this out. But anyways, stay hydrated, stay safe, stay well rested, and of course, stay tuned, you guys. Bye! 25 minutes? Brother, ugh. Brother, ugh. <laughs>